Phước Hong Kong Quang Phước Hong Kong Quang Phước Hong Kong It's a privilege to join you tonight on behalf of uh, Hong Kong Watch a privilege but of course also a deep sadness to join you as we commemorate the third anniversary of that terrible attack in Prince Edward Station on the 31st of August 2019. I just came from uh, Rome. Uh, I just flew in uh, a couple of hours ago and I came directly here from Heathrow Airport. And when uh, I was... Actually, I was due to fly uh, back from Rome a few hours later tonight. But when I was uh, invited to join you tonight to speak uh, at this event, I thought this is so important because it is so important that we commemorate uh, every anniversary of every important and tragic event in Hong Kong. Not only as a way of remembering, though that is important because the Chinese Communist Party want us to forget and we must make sure that we never ever forget and that we don't allow anyone else to forget either. So it's important to remember, but it's also important to take the opportunity on these occasions to appeal again to our communities, to our political leaders, to the international community, not to forget Hong Kong and to do more uh, for Hong Kong. And so when I was asked if I would come tonight, uh, I was able to change my flights because I thought it is important to be here, and I'm glad to be here. When I think of this day three years ago, of course, I was not in Hong Kong. Many of you were, I'm sure, uh, but I was here in London, but I was watching the news uh, very closely as I was uh, every day in 2019. And I remember a few hours after the terrible attack in the MTR station. I remember seeing the footage. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, police forces around the world, no police force is perfect. But in a decent, open, free society, we generally think that the police force is there to keep us safe to prevent crime, to prevent violence. But what I saw in that footage of the Prince Edward attack was the police themselves committing violence, the police themselves committing crimes, the police themselves putting people in grave danger. And I concluded that this is no longer a police force, this is a criminal gang, a gang of thugs, uh, and a bloodthirsty, violent mob. And yet three years on, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that no police officer, either who took part in the violence uh, this day three years ago or in any of the other many incidents throughout 2019, no police officer in Hong Kong has been brought to justice. No police officer has been held to account. No police officer has been uh, made to uh, explain uh, what they did and why they did it. And yet thousands and thousands of innocent, peaceful protesters in Hong Kong were arrested and jailed. And that is a terrible injustice. So I want to encourage you today by saying we must all be relentless in pursuit of justice. We must not give up demanding that those responsible for perpetrating terrible acts of violence by the police, not just this day, but throughout 2019, must be held to account. And if they're not going to be held to account by the Hong Kong authorities, which clearly now, especially as the Hong Kong government is led by one of the police force's own thugs, Police Constable John Lee, a man who has no experience of government except the experience of locking people up, beating people up, 
arresting people. His whole life was in either policing or in the security bureau in the Hong Kong government. And so it's hard to imagine that under his government, anyone will be held to account for the police's violence. But that's all the more reason why our own leaders in the building across the road and in other countries around the world uh, should hold those responsible to account. A few months ago, Hong Kong Watch published a briefing on the uh, assets uh, that we could identify, and I'm sure there are more, but the assets of Hong Kong officials complicit with the CCP and its dismantling of Hong Kong's freedoms, the assets that they hold in, in London and in other cities around the world, property uh, and other assets. And it is outrageous that they continue to own property and have other assets here or elsewhere uh, and that no government has gone after those assets. So we demand that the British government conduct a thorough audit of the assets of every Hong Kong official and maybe some senior police officers and others who are responsible for the terrible atrocities that have taken place in Hong Kong and sanction every one of them. So we should be relentless in pursuit of justice and we should never ever give up in the fight for freedom. And I know by your presence here today that uh, you won't give up, I certainly won't give up either. And together we will see the day. I don't know when and it may be a long time, uh, it probably will be a long time, but we will see one day uh, Hong Kong free and the whole of China free uh, and a Hong Kong that once again uh, people can live in without fear. Uh, fear of the knock on the door at midnight and being taken off or in the early hours of the morning and being taken off to prison. The fear of a policeman uh, wielding their baton on, a, on an MTR uh, train. Uh, one day we will see a Hong Kong where that fear is gone and where Hong Kong once again is open and free and we must continue to work for that day to come. You know, I want to end I know my good friend David Campanali at the beginning uh, quoted some famous uh, voices of conscience and I want to end with two quotes from heroes of mine who inspire me. One of my heroes, probably my biggest political hero in this country is a British politician about 200 years ago called William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce worked, campaigned, for more than 40 years for the abolition of slavery. And just near where I live, his house on Wimbledon Common, there is a plaque uh, commemorating him. And I've taken several Hong Kong friends uh, to see that plaque and to hear uh, his example and his message. I remember I took Jim there shortly after uh, Jim Wong came to, to London. But William Wilberforce, said these words about slavery, and I think we can use these words to the world about Hong Kong. Because the world knows what's happened in Hong Kong. And so Wil Wilberforce's words are very relevant here. Wilberforce said, you can no longer plead ignorance. You cannot turn aside. And we must ensure that the whole world does not turn aside, but that we keep up the pressure, we keep up the spotlight, we keep up the focus on Hong Kong. The other quote I want to end with was from another great political hero of mine, Edmund Burke, who said, the only thing needed for the triumph of evil is for good men and good women to do nothing. This square, Parliament Square, is filled with good men and women. And there are good men and women in the building across the, the, the road. And there are good men and women around the world. And we must ensure that good men and women everywhere uh, do not do nothing, but that we all do something to continue to help Hong Kong. And one day, Hong Kong and the whole of China will be free. And this day, this anniversary, will always be remembered as we remember those who suffered, those who were beaten, those even perhaps who gave their lives, those who ended up in prison. But one day, their sacrifice will lead to Hong Kong's freedom. Guang Fu Hong Gong. Gaiao.